Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Lorenzo's Music Podcast. I'm Tom Ray. On today's show, I meet a band called Mr. Gnome. They started out as a two-piece, and they are currently going on tour for a new album that they just released. And they happen to be coming through my town, so I was able to get in contact with them and talk to them about how they made the new album, their recording setup, videos that they've done, how they've been touring and actually starting their own record label. So here is that interview starting right now. I'm Nicole and I am the singer and guitar player, sometimes bass, sometimes piano for Mr. No. I am Sam and I play drums and piano and percussion. That's that's about it. (laughs) Can I drive a van? <laughs> and you drive. Okay. <laughs> now, where are you guys located right now? Uh, we're a little bit outside Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Have you always been from there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, now you guys have been uh, touring and stuff, and you are in the process of getting ready to release a new album. Now, one of the mm-hmm. things you said when you were introducing yourself, I was going to ask this, as a two-piece band, mm-hmm. you have multiple instruments. And I was going to say who plays what, but it sounds like you all kind of take turns. So how does that work out? How do you guys decide who's going to play what, or is it however you brought the idea for the song to the table? Like how do you guys work out who plays what when you're recording? So, I mean, we started as a two piece um, and that's what we've been for a while. Now, uh, as far as our live show, we bring Sam's brother, Joan out with us. So he does help us fill in some of the gaps instrumentally. So he plays guitar and bass on some songs as well. Okay. Um, I was, and- was going to ask who the bass yeah. player was that I see in some of the videos because you do yeah. have a constant bass player. That's your brother. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. that's handy. And yeah. he, plays, uh, he plays some guitar and bass on like half of our records over the last, I would say, two records. He's played on like half of it. Um, half of each one. And so, um, but in regards to when we record, um, it kind of just depends on, you know, we, we, when we're writing, we both play piano. Sam can play a little guitar. I primarily play guitar. We both can play a little bass. So we can kind of, I can't play drums at all. That's the, I can, I know one <laughs> beat. I know right. like one beat, but, um, but yeah, so we kind of just like whoever wrote the song, whoever feels comfortable recording it. You know, we have our own home studio, so it's very relaxed. Um, oh, okay. And so it's very like experimental, you know, so yeah. So whoever's feeling it that day, whoever feels most confident to track the parts, you know, that's pretty much yeah. how we do it. Yeah. Now, you guys have been, from what I've seen, releasing uh, albums since uh, 2008, so mm-hmm. how did the band get started? Like, when did it officially begin? We started in 2005 was our first EP. And okay. we self-released that. And then 2006 or mm-hmm. so, we got a booking agent mm-hmm. from a label who was trying to sign us. And then we started touring. We didn't sign with the label, end up signing with the label, but we did work with the booking agent for almost 15 years after that. Um, And so we just started touring nationally. In 2007, we put out another EP. And then 2008, we recorded our first full length record. And then we put out, since then, we put out, this will be the most recent one's going to be our sixth record. Six so, full length. Yeah. Six full length mm-hmm. record. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause you released some EPs, you've done some B sides. Um, mm-hmm. We try not and, to talk about the EPs and like, and, 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 and like we took them off of Spotify. Cause like, we just kept noticing they were coming up and we're like, it just sounds so di-. like it was like our kindergarten work, you know? And then we'll get <laughs> fans who are like, why are the EPs? And we're like, I personally cannot listen to them. I don't want them to represent us, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we don't speak of them, of those children. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what you mean. We had a, uh, we had an album we released back when podcasting very first started Mm -hmm. and people were getting in trouble for using, uh, you know, actual, actual music. Mm -hmm. Ours is an actual apparently. And, uh, so they, we were getting used a lot because we were like allowing people to use it for free under creative commons. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we still have like one of the first albums that we ever put out that like, we don't even know how to play the songs on that album anymore. It's so, you know, like that. 
and and it's still like one of our most popular songs and it's like what, what's your band uh lorenzo's music is what oh we're nice called. awesome okay where are you from uh i'm located in madison wisconsin Oh, and awesome. That's okay. great. We love that. Where Madison. you guys are coming. That's that's yeah. actually how I found out about you. You're coming to the Gamma Ray on yes. the 10th yeah. of October. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we just played a show there recently with um, the Greyhounds and then two members of Los Lobos, Dave Hidalgo and uh, Steve Berlin, the sax player. So, so cool. And that was right after the Gamma Ray opened. So, nice. like, how is you got, it? It's a great place. It's, that's the great. owner is the nicest person. Kevin, okay. yeah. 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 And, so and we so, have known, if you know Darwin, we, we've known Darwin, yes. like okay. all the way back, like the annex, I right. think he booked us that, that yes. interesting spot. And yeah. the, and Darwin was, he booked us on our very first mm-hmm. tour. And he, really? he was when always, was this? 2006, probably. Oh, we, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. So 2006 yeah. It was around, 2007. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Around that. So we've known him for a long time now and so yeah we followed him to the frequency and then we would play the frequency a bunch and darwin's amazing and and so we hit him up because we were coming to madison and you know we we haven't toured in eight years so this is a it's a bit crazy i was gonna ask Um, about that yeah Mm -hmm. because there is kind of a gap in between some of the of this new album that you have coming out and not the it's only a couple of years but then The the album a couple of years ago there was a very big gap in releases. What's what happened there? Yeah, so well, twenty fourteen was our so our fourth release, which was the Heart of a Dark Star, and then um, it took us a couple of years. We were like touring a ton behind that, and we were yeah, working. we toured for like two full years behind mm-hmm. that. Like really, straight, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we were working on an album the whole time um, and just kept like, you know, putting finishing touches on it. In 2017, we were supposed to release a record and go on tour and my dad unexpectedly passed away. And then two two weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. So it was like this crazy moment in our lives um, of just a really terrible, the worst thing ever and the greatest thing ever. So that we ended up. From 2017 to 2020, we wrote what 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 is now this album called "The Day Flew," and that was our last record um, that we put out in 2020. So we were supposed to tour again then, and then COVID happened. Right, and, and so life just keeps. I figured telling that us, was that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So life keeps telling us to stay home for a minute. So. <laughs> 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 so but yeah, yeah we're so excited i mean we played our first show back a couple weeks ago in lexington kentucky at like the psych fest and it was so fun and we were so nervous about playing again for the first time but it was it was a bit like riding a bike you know um we played everything a little fast and we were nervous but like it yeah. felt really good you know so it's just that connection with people as you know being a live musician there's nothing like it you know so Right. And I wanted to ask you too, and this it kind of explains it from what you just said there before you said you played some shows and then a booking agent contacted you before or to get in touch with a label. So you mm-hmm. got contacted right away by a booking agent. To me, that seems odd, but we now I'm really thinking lucky. it's because you played out a lot. Right. A yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. Every, pretty much every good thing that's happened to our career is from us playing a live show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we're very okay. DIY grassroots yeah. that way, for sure. We've yeah. made, I, I would say, like 90% of our fans are from them seeing us play. Um, okay. Every working relationship we have, business relationship, is from someone mm-hmm. seeing us play. Um, that's just how our career trajectory has worked. Um, a lot of people, it doesn't, like, we have friends who got famous on the internet, mm-hmm. you know, right. and just the complete opposite way of us, mm-hmm. you know, um, but for whatever reason, we're doing it the old fashioned way, whether, <laughs> whether we want to or not. <laughs> I will You're- say though, like we, we were so lucky to get our booker and we don't, he, we don't work with them anymore. We work with another agency, but there, he's still like one of our very good friends. And, and we knew right away, you know, coming up with other bands, how hard it was to get a booker. And we happened to get someone that was just such a good person. And we had such a mm-hmm. good friendship. Um, His wife's from Cleveland. They now live in Tucson. So, oh, wow. okay. so, yeah, I think that gave us so many opportunities to, you know, once we started touring, we understood how much progress could be made from being out on the road a lot and how much we were growing as like musicians and songwriters just from being exposed to so much music and mm-hmm. and just playing live all the time. So that was kind of like, you, 
Yeah. Well, would you tour with someone? Did you have a band? Because that's it's, so. I'm asking just because you're coming at it from a different perspective than yeah. most DIY people. Yeah. Because one of the worst things about playing live is booking shows and finding bands yes. and promoting yeah. in that area. And you no, kind of I have mean, that covered. So yeah, uh, it, it was always just us. Yeah. I mean, we added Jonah, Sam's brother. He didn't start touring with us to till 2015. So for, from 2000, you know, I say six, but our main touring was like 2008 when we really started touring like a ton, you yeah. know, um, from that all the way till 2014, it was just us. And yeah, um, so our set with our set at that time was like very punk rock, very, you know, just strip stripped down, sweaty, fun, like, just like, uh, it all just like really depended on the energy that was you know, that energy transference between us and the crowd. And just, it was so, it was really fun to do it that way. Now having Jonah, it's, it just allows us to do so many other things. So we do like half of our set as a two piece and then we bring Jonah up and uh, it's just so fun. You know, it's nice to have the flexibility. And even with Jonah there, do you bring multi instruments with you? I guess, what is your live show setup? Because with the multiple instruments that you play, do you have mm -hmm. stuff you travel with and you have to mm -hmm. figure out how to incorporate that? Like we can't just bring a piano for one song, you know, that's, sort of but stuff. we would, though. we would do that. Though. Yeah. Oh, you we would? have, okay. um, we have, I've had my setups, like I have drums and then behind me, I have a uh, piano. Nice. And I okay. run, pull patches from the laptop. So I'll use it as a synth or a piano or an organ. I'll just get the sounds from the laptop. Um, and depending on the set we're doing, Nicole will have a similar setup, but we're not doing that for this tour. And okay. then also Jonah plays guitar and bass, and he plays a guitar and a bass at the same time through an octave pedal. Like he's got this really mm. crazy setup he does. And then also he's got a little foot piano that he would play too with his feet oh. while he's playing the bass and the guitar. Like he's like a one man band. We just corner. make sure yeah. he's going to pass out. You know? <laughs> so like we'd like as much as we can do, we try to do. Um, yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. Let me get it. Okay. I want to get into the foot pedal and I also want to, you mentioned you have a piano behind you and it's running yeah. through the laptop. So you're yeah. running it through a synthesizer in the laptop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you, with as much touring as you're doing and with this setup now, you can show up and just go, Hey, Mr. Soundman, we have all this stuff, hook it up. Or do you have a contained unit that you use and then output that? Like, do you have a special mm -hmm. sound setup that you do for your live mm -hmm. shows? Yeah. So like Nicole's got a, she's got a whole vocal rack that we bring that has a reverb and delay and, um, oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Basically pretty much do. And she triggers it all with her feet. Um, so she controls oh. that aspect of it. And so we just give them a, basically an XLR output of her, of her rig to, to the house. And mm -hmm. then I'll, I have an interface hooked up to my stuff. I just give them a stereo out of that. And then everything else, they just mic up the amps pretty much. Oh, wow. I love it. Okay. And are you running an in-ear monitor system or are you still relying no. on monitors? No, you know, we, we've to. talked about the in-ear <laughs> stuff, but like, like once again, just cause it had been so long, we just kind of wanted to go back to our roots for this one. We were worried about like, I don't know, dabbling too much with the in-ear stuff, but at right. the same time, I feel like that would probably help our ears, you know, cause yeah. Yeah. I can only wear one earplug and the, the first show back we played a couple of weeks ago, none of us wore earplugs cause we were just like, we're just going, you know, did I you? Wanted, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you know, you're trying to hear yourself the best you can. You're like, no one has time for earplugs. And then after the show, you're like, now I'm deaf. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and and it's funny I'm asking that. It's like you already just explained. We have all this com you know complex, expensive stuff, and I'm like, well, why aren't you running ear monitors? Why don't you just spend some more money? True. Yeah. No, I think it would be. It's the smart way to go, and maybe eventually. Yeah, you know? right. I would so, love yeah. to. I would like to make that investment if and when we can, because I just think it's safer. You know. Okay. I do love monitors, though. Like I feel like that feeds in to the performance because we did a radio show here in Cleveland. A like two weeks ago and it was all through headphones and it's, it's a little, it's a little weird. Like, I, I just feel like that's the way I grew as a performer is like, you know, that monitor right. is just like, I don't know. It just becomes like part of your live thing, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, we do a lot of live uh, video streams from our mm -hmm. studio and uh, I have to test out the stuff first. So I'll have, I'll be hooked up to the sound card and 
I'm the only person that's free to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll have headphones on testing it. And like, while I'm singing and getting everybody all dialed in mm -hmm. and I'll just find, it's just not, it screws me up basically yeah. is the only way I can explain it. It's mm -hmm. weird mm -hmm. being able to hear yourself that perfectly. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah so, Cause you've learned a different way, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. And I get it. Like I like mm -hmm. the monitor. I like being able to hear the band in the room, even when, yeah. you know, you have that, those, weird times when it's just like, why does the room sound like such crap today? You know, yeah. it's, but still yeah. it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are touring right now and you have a new album coming out. Tell me about this tour. How, how long are you going this time? What's the extent of this tour that you're doing? Um, it's pretty much September 27th, which is Friday and also the, our release day for our new album. And then we go all the way till our home show in Cleveland on November 2nd. So it's, you know, okay. it's, it's long. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And uh, tell me about the new album. So you guys uh, have this coming out, like you said, uh, it may, I think it may actually be released by the time this comes out. This is coming out okay. on Friday. Okay, so cool. it should yeah, be out already. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so tell me about making the album. Where did you guys record it? First of all, um, we recorded it all here. So this oh, is like, did. this is like our area that we practice and record at. Um, and yeah, so it's all, but we started it right after the last one, like once again, cause of COVID, uh, like we released that album in 2020 and then didn't have anywhere else to go. So just started working on this one right away. Yeah. <laughs> didn't have anywhere else to go. I like that. That's the precursor yeah, for any I mean, album. <laughs> and our, our son was only two, you know, he wasn't even two when COVID started. So it was a weird time, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we lost two people right away that were oh, no. like our best friends. And it was just, it was just a really confusing moment, you know, and I, there's so many times in life where I, I just feel so lucky to have music. You know, I feel like it saved my soul a lot of times. And, and I feel like when we started writing this record, we would have been really lost without that outlet, you know, yeah. so there's a lot of emotions in this record. There was on the last one too. So um, we're, we're ready for like sunnier days. So we don't have to write about all our emotions as intensely from here on out, but you know, that's not how life works, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So. so what, what was the, uh, songwriting process? Like, uh, did you, do you start out track by track? Do you just kind of come up with a bunch of ideas at once and then try to wrangle them all together and see which ones are going to be songs? Like, what is your process? Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. It varies. I think that for this specific album, we would be doing a lot of like sharing riffs with each other. Just be like, what do you think of this riff? Or like, what do you think of this drum beat? What do you think of this piano mm -hmm. part? And when it inspired the other person, we'd keep working on it and we'd come up with batches of songs and, and, and then only one would make it at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But right. you know, th this thing has evolved and shifted and changed and, um, there's a lot of songs we couldn't fit on the record. We didn't want to put another double record out that we did that on the last one. We're like, we can't put another double record. That would be so <laughs> obnoxious. So we didn't yeah. do it. <laughs> so, you know, we had a ton of songs and we just picked the, the ones at the end of the day that made us, I guess, the most excited. Mm -hmm. Um, the ones that were the most meaningful to us. Um, like Nicole said, this, we've been going through a lot of tough moments of life lately. And um, so this album reflects that and um, especially lyrically. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the things that, that were meaningful, meaningful to us at the end of the day are the ones we chose, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And when Thanks. you <clears throat> go right ahead, sorry. Oh, I was going to say the difference I feel like between this album is uh, like our times to like jam together. We're a little more limited because once again, like we were stuck in our house with our two year old. So it was like, you know, it was just harder. It was like, we had to work a lot separately at a lot of times. There were times where we would like be able to jam together, but they weren't like back in the day, we would literally just like have a practice spot and we would play for hours okay. and just take these riffs or these ideas and like, just go, you know? And I feel like that was the experimental process with those was like more in the, the, live writing of it and now our experimental process is more in the box where we like take this idea that we really like and we push it until we you know until we feel like it can't go any further or until we hate it and then yeah. we never want to listen to it again <laughs> and then we're like no yeah. let's get that out of there you know what i mean 
But um, but yeah. So I mean, it's so fun. We're obviously addicted to it because you know we we can't stop writing. And and now that we're getting back into like practicing, now we're like falling in love with playing in that way again. So now we're like you know making up songs while we're practicing, and like it's just really fun to get back into and like be able to do it in a different way now. So yeah. yeah. No, that is one of the questions I was going to ask is, uh, I was curious, since you are living together, you also have your own studio there. If a lot of the stuff is first done as a group or with the two of you playing something and then going through and adding things later, or if you record piece by piece, and it sounds like you've done both. And with this new yeah. album, you're saying you've done it more like, here's an idea, you kind of work through it. And then the other person switches duties upstairs yeah. and then one comes That's downstairs hard. and yeah. finishes yeah. working on it. Okay. Yeah. So All yeah, right. that would be this record for sure. And like a lot of the last record as well. Yeah. Like half of the last one we had written half before everything, before my dad had passed away and, and our son was born. And then we kind of wrote the other half more in this style, you know? So it's okay. been super fun. It's really interesting. I mean, songwriting so interesting. So to be kind of forced to write a certain way, well, you kind of like grow in that way then mm -hmm. if you really keep pushing it, you know, which we do, we like push stuff as much as we can, you know, so right. probably explains why we have like seven minute songs. Cause we're like, <laughs> we just enjoy like those movements where songs start one way. And then the second half, you would never have known that it came. I just like, I've, I've always thought that was fun. I like, like going on an, an adventure a journey while I'm listening. So I, I feel like we like creating that as well. You know? Okay. And how elaborate is your home studio setup since you have been recording the albums in this way and they sound great. So yeah. what are you doing as far as, I mean, do you have multiple mics? Are you reusing stuff like, or is it pretty bare bones? It's pretty, I mean, as far as the studio goes, it's completely bare bones. Um, okay. But it is more than most people probably have at the same time too. Um, we have like, a uh, mic collection of probably about 10 mics. Um, we use a old analog 16 channel mixer. I have some preamps in that are in um, the 500 series, the little guys that go into like the lunch boxes. Um, mm -hmm. And those are the best things I have. Those are the highest end things I have. And so we'll use like a, like a Chandler preamp, um, which I love. We'll record guitars with that and the snare drum with that. I've got a uh, great river uh, preamp that we record her vocals through mm. and uh, like a Neve EQ that we, you know, just to EQ her voice a little bit. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. Like we have a microphone that we love on her vocals and then everything else is like sure 57s and 58s and like just your basic stuff you know right yeah um, just enough to go around on the drums and nothing too fancy really you know and you're, you're eqing the vocals beforehand you're saying yeah. you're, you're eqing yeah. from the source oh mm -hmm. okay yeah we yeah, don't we go do some far. stuff we do it really like old like old analog way you know like um our first album we recorded on tape live so we're oh, always fun. kind of been into like you know, testing our, our, you know, can we do it the way that the old pros used to do it? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so we have fun trying to do stuff like that, but yeah, we'll, we'll make the sounds before they go in. And a lot of people don't do that. And we also don't overdo it either. Like I won't do it on certain things because I want to have, when we pass it off, we don't mix it. We always pass it off to a mixer. Mm -hmm. So okay. I don't want to limit them either with stuff, but her voice, we know how we want it to sit and how we want it to sound and how we want it to be highlighted. And okay. so we feel comfortable doing that with, with her voice for sure. Um, that also, else, yeah, yeah th that also really explains the, you have some live videos that you have and I'm like, it's just interesting because it's one of those things where it's like, it sounds like when people lip sync to their song and you guys have live videos and it's like, oh, because that's your setup and that's what you're using. It sounds exactly yeah. like the record because that's what you did. Yeah, so exactly. that explains a lot. Yeah. The home, the home, ever since we started doing it at home, I started, and this, all, this happened like all the way back on our third record because we had our one engineer come here and he lived in Portland at the time and he did all oh. my vocals here. Um, and that's kind of how I realized like, oh, we can like drums were the trickiest part of figuring out how to do here. But, um, right. but I realized how much I like, like singing out of an amp to like set 
the mood for the songs, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so my, our son is, our son's playing video games upstairs, but I feel like he's going <laughs> to come and creep down. So if, if we disappear, if one of us disappears. Yeah, so that's been so fun. So I just sing out of this like Mesa with a 57, a 58. 57 and uh and that's been so fun because i used to always start with the clean stuff and Mm -hmm. it's like you have to be so specific about the vibe that you're setting the whole song up with and i feel like with the amp like you can be really quiet you can be really aggressive like it's just such a cool way to kind of put the first layer of the vocals and then i'll come with i'll come with like the clean stuff and kind of layer it on top of it um and i just really like the world it's been making you know for the song so, yeah, it's just been a huge discovery process. And I, that's the one pro about being at home is like just how much you can discover, you know. So Right. Yeah, no, I, I really do like that that vocal setup that you uh, I know for sure you used it on. I uh, forget the name of the song, but it's one with the full band where you're singing. And uh, yeah, your vocals are just the effects coming through. So that's mic'd up through an amp uh, is what Fader, you're saying. Was it Fader, one of the new tracks? Uh, maybe, yes. Uh, yeah. The track. mm-hmm. Our dog's yeah. here. <laughs> oh, the dog's there? Oh, nice. What kind of dog is it? It's a Rottweiler. She's a Rottweiler. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're just all head. Yeah. <laughs> She's awesome. great. Yeah. We love her. <laughs> now, as far as the album artwork, which I've noticed over the years has been fairly consistent to mm-hmm. a certain style and, you know, sort of expression. Who does the artwork for those albums? I, I put it all together. Oh, you do? Okay. It's a collaborative effort on like, you know, coming up with the, the characters and the themes and the meaning and the approach. Like, but yeah, I put it all together. Okay. What's your process for making the artwork? How are you doing it? Um, it's mixed media. I do. Uh, it's, it's basically photo collage, essentially. I, we oh, make nice. costumes and um, do photo shoots and then I just build a, build a world with it. Oh, you're actually making the photos of the things you're going to create the collage out of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then how are you finishing? Are, are you taking a photograph of the finished product or how is the actual, you know, released image being captured? It's usually pieces yeah. that get put together, but yeah. Yeah. So we'll build like for the latest record, we, um, we wanted the, the sliver of space cover, um, we built this character, um, the mask and the outfit. And my mom helps us with that too. We, we're like oh, nice. a, we're like a family team over here, creative. Yeah, his mom's this incredible artist that is like two D, three D. Like she could just do so much. And I don't oh. know how we first got her involved. I it was like our first video where we're like, "Would you make this?" And like, if she ever knew that we were like getting her, come on, you're gonna start making costumes for us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so we'll, you know, we work on these things together. We build these things. We build a lot of characters that don't, no one will ever see the, you know, but mm-hmm. so this specific one. So uh, we built the, the space character. We, I shoot uh, a little photo shoot and bring it into Photoshop. And then all the elements, I just take pictures and I build these worlds out of them. So for the new cover, I had like, it's basically some pictures I took when we were on tour for the background and just, I like to take pictures out the car window while we're driving of beautiful places. And then I use them as backgrounds for our art and, um, you know, clouds and this character, these star elements that I made in Photoshop. And I just put it all together, you know, um, Photoshop, okay. magic Photoshop. Okay. So the collage is actually being done. You're scanning it digitally and then collaging it digitally. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Okay. Cause I was going to, that's what I was asking because when you're done, it's like, do you have this big giant piece and then you have to get a great photo of it that you could <laughs> then use, or is it something that's digital? So you're just yeah. exporting it when you're done. Okay. Mm-hmm. No, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, so does that mean that your mother made the bunny costume for the video? Um, which, which bunny costume? Uh, <laughs> There's yeah, yeah, no, I'm the pretty one sure where you guys beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the store bought one. Yeah, one that? that's the well, gold edges. I think is the one he's talking about. Uh, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. Okay. The one where basically you get killed at the end, and then the she continues of the to play. Eye with yeah, the drumstick. Yeah, right. Yes, so that one. That one we bought. <laughs> that one we bought on our first. Um, 
our yeah. first record, we were making a music video for a song called Night of the Crickets, and that that bunny character is in that one as well. But we have okay. a, a whole bunny theme throughout a lot of records. It's a it's like our unofficial right. mascot. So, okay. but she has made characters, including for this last one, that we're still trying to figure out how to how to use it. But it's a pretty rad piece. Yeah, she made this ginormous awesome looking rabbit costume and yeah so we're trying to figure out how to use it but we will <laughs> we, we use everything we always eventually. do <laughs> now you had mentioned i wanted to ask you about this you had mentioned before um going back to the booking agent and you said and they were trying to get you on a label that you never went with and i realized mm -hmm. that the reason behind that is is because you started your own record label tell mm -hmm. me about starting your own record label why did you do this and how did you do it well, we were in Portland recording the record, our first record, which is called um, Deliver This Creature. Mm -hmm. And we were talking to labels and we were also really getting into the business side of music. Mm -hmm. um, we were reading a lot of books and just we wanted to be smart about if we sign with these labels, like, let's be smart. How does this work? How how does this work for us? What are we setting ourselves up for? So we're doing all this investigating and studying and we're learning a lot of things. And we're like, dude, we can do this ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. and at that moment in 2008, like the industry was crumbling, like mm -hmm. all the independents were closing down. The major labels didn't know what to do. Everything was switching to digital. Uh, and we were right in the middle of it. So we're like, why sign with something that could literally not exist a year from now? Mm -hmm. And they would still own our music and we would never have it again. Mm -hmm. Or we can try and do this ourselves. So we were hearing like horror stories from some bands on the road too. Like uh, there was one band that I won't like say who they are or anything, but their whole record got shelved and they had no access to it. So all the work they had done, they didn't, I mean, it just broke our hearts and they were such nice people. And so I think you just like hear enough stories like that. And then when you talk to labels, if the deal's not the greatest, it's, it can scare you, you know, and it can yeah. just make you realize that maybe it'll make making music not as fun anymore, you know, yep. and once you're doing it for other people. And, you know, I think we just felt like if we're going to tour all the time and put so much into it, maybe we can figure out how to make it lucrative on our own, you know? Yeah. So, no, yeah. that literally happened to our bass player. Do you remember yeah. the, the uh, website garage band before it became a recording mm -hmm. thing, garage mm -hmm. band where you went and you uploaded your music and mm -hmm. you voted on other people's bands and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The band he was in actually won there. We're making a label and we're having a contest to see who wins it. And oh, his okay. band won. They got to go record with Brian Eno. But That's the thing crazy. is, they didn't know how to run a record label. They were a <laughs> website. So they got so wrapped up into stuff that it never got released. They won oh. this contest and never got to release the album that My they were God. getting signed for. That's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. And you hear enough of those stories. It does weird you out. Because I yeah. mean, when you're young, you have the stars in your eyes and you're just like, oh my gosh, a label? Where do I sign? You know what I mean? And I feel like that did have, we were entranced a couple of times to be like, let's just, you know, and then we just, always at the last minute, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It just never felt quite right, you know? So. so now you said, like, we can do this. Let's run our own. I mean, mm -hmm. Anyone could say that. So how did you do it? <laughs> so I mean, honestly, like what we did was we studied. We like mm -hmm. we yeah. got books. We went to the library. We read tons and tons of books. We talked to people who were doing it. We talked mm -hmm. to people in the business. We tried to just be smart. But in doing so, we screwed up all the whole. We've screwed up a thousand times, and we just oh, like yeah. we try to make our okay. screw ups not you know, bankrupt us, but mm -hmm. you know, we're, we, we screw up and we learn from our mistakes and we just keep trying to grow and be smarter businessmen. Cause that's what it really is. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one smart thing we did, I think before a lot of bands did is we switched to vinyl. Like we were just doing CDs mm -hmm. and I was like, no one's buying CDs anymore. They're all just, it's all, it was downloads then. So everyone was switching to downloads and it was Napster and it was like people were stealing digital copies of music. And I was mm -hmm. like, let's go back and make our music this big with mm -hmm. a big piece of art and let's just sell the art. Like let, let them mm -hmm. see the art, let them see the beauty of this physical package. And then like, so we started selling records 
very early, very early. We, we'd be on tour and we'd be the only band with records mm -hmm. for years. And um, so I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to circle back around and I have no idea what I'm talking about. No, no, you are answering it. And it really was just it's what do you up. do as a as a record label I and especially you as your to, own. So you're trying to sell art. It's like the hardest mm -hmm. thing to do yeah. in the world is sell art. <laughs> yeah. And so you try to get people to be interested enough in what you're doing to like give you their money. And how like is there a formula for it? I don't think so. And and does uh, does it work the same way for everybody? It doesn't. You just have to find what kind of works for you. So we just started, like I said, we started first. We started selling um, records, and 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 we were like ahead of the game on that. And and that's a big thing for us even today. We sell record packages like box sets, and we try to make it special. We try to be like, mm -hmm. if you're gonna be cool enough to give us your money for our music mm -hmm. then here have this awesome thing mm -hmm. with it you yeah. know um but just building the business was all grassroots going we're a traveling store so we get in the van we go play a show and then we're like what do you want to buy you know so that was our record label is like going town mm -hmm. to town like a traveling salesman and being like here's here's our stuff what what would you like today yeah <laughs> you yeah. know um, so that's we were how... very comfy touring a lot too. You know, I mean, I think that's I gathered that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what's so funny about how much time we've taken off. But um, it's almost like we did those ten years nonstop, and then we're like, all right, let's take off almost ten years. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. But I think between that and we were lucky enough to get some licensing deals and stuff like that. So it's just been, you know, you work hard and just keep your fingers crossed that things will go the right way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a lot of luck. It's a lot of luck, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you guys travel with a lot of merchandise, you're saying? Yeah. I mean, we're going to scale it back for this first one a bit. Oh, like, okay. Um, because we were like, when we left like off. Like on trinkety Yeah, stuff, we were just yeah. like, the table was just stacked. Get your trinkets, magnets. Get like <laughs> any, anything we could put our name on kind of thing, we'll be like, you, we would sell it. But I mean, as long as it was arts. Like, we've always been the artsy route. Like, yeah, as I mean, long it's, as our, we, it's our yeah, art. But yeah. it was like, yeah, we're doing buttons and magnets and keychains and mm -hmm. bottle openers. Like, just everything. And, mm -hmm. and But this tour, we're just doing T-shirts and records and CDs and that that's tour posters. It, yeah. Posters mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is and then, still a lot of stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's then like, do you guys have any plans for, uh, I know you're releasing lyric videos right now. Do you have any plans for some new, uh, videos that you have coming out we, for this new album? We had so many plans and like this summer has flown by. I mean, cause our, right. one of our main, like the main thing that we do every day is getting ready to play live. So it's like there was so much work to be done with rehearsing and just getting our chops back up, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But we do have video ideas and we are planning on doing them, you know. So. Yeah, I hope when we get back that we can take a couple of months and make some videos. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I really enjoy doing that part of everything. I, mm -hmm. I do. I think it's so fun and um, it's just so hard to do when it's us doing everything mm -hmm. that we have to be like okay let's let's get ready and for the tour and go on tour then we can <laughs> then we can do right. some videos when yeah. we get home you know mm -hmm. who who do you work with on the videos do you do them yourself because they have that look they don't look like they're done with a phone let's put it that way i don't mm -hmm. know how else to explain it they look like they're <laughs> shot on film mm -hmm. or you know what i mean they look That's real awesome. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we do it all we do it you all do. We have, yeah yeah. Sam was like, he went to school for, well, like TV and movies. And I mean, oh. he was, when we first met, he was so into, you know, this is more with like a camera and like, and he was like editing it on the camera, but he's always been so into it. So I think okay. when we started Mr. Noma, it was so exciting because I was like, okay, well, we love music and we love making music, but this is an excuse also to make so much art. So we get to make covers and t-shirts and videos. And so I think that, you know, once we made the first one it was just like you know but it's all like we do write a bunch of the video ideas together but sam will really take it and run and and you know so yeah it's, okay. it's super fun yeah <laughs> yeah i was it gonna is. say because even even some of the ones that would just be a short like oh this is a funny idea like the uh recreation of the kid smoking pot only it's the yeah. pixie dust and he finds your yeah. cd like even that one, that one could have been shot on a phone, but it looks like something that would have been done on like a sketch show. 
you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. we had saw that one. I mean, I was doing the sound for that, and I like they were yelling at me a lot because I could not stop laughing. I mean, I was my side because <laughs> they were like giving it a million percent, and then right at the end, right when Sam's editing, he's like, I think I'm gonna pitch shift their voices up so they sound like gnomes, and I'm like, genius. You know? <laughs> So yeah, it's pretty. so the 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 sun gnome that's Jonah that's our guitar bass player. Oh, that's so. what I thought. <laughs> okay, yeah. So who is who's the dad? Who's the person that walked in as the dad? That's, that was my other brother. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, that explains that. I was curious. I knew it had to be somebody you were connected with. A lot of people I know they like go they're going to college and they know a bunch of film students so right. they're like you know they can just grab a bunch of gear yeah. and go do yeah. whatever they want on the weekends but right. you're saying oh it's just what i do <laughs> we're very family oriented yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no that's great to know and then um so uh are there any other things before we go today that you'd like to tell people about or mention or something we didn't talk about today that you'd like to uh um. say to the people no, I mean, you know, we just feel so lucky that people still care about what we're doing. And we're so excited to come back to Madison. We yeah, we I spent a Madison. lot of time there. Madison's and fantastic. Yeah, we just, really we've met it. so many great people there. And um, yeah, we're just, you know, there's so many cities we're looking forward to. And that's definitely one that's high up on the list. So, and mm-hmm. yeah, we thank you for talking with us today. Yeah, thank we you. So thank you. It. I'm it was really nice to meet you guys. And uh, so yes, nice you will you. enjoy the show at the Gamma Ray. The new Gamma Ray, is, it's a nice setup. So it's, awesome. it'll be yeah. fun. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, we are. We're super excited.